All right, good morning. Is it fog out there that much? I don't think so. Is it? Well, okay, cool. Okay, so uh, we are going to continue with uh, what we've done with uh, the last session, which was uh, talking about dynamic memory allocation. So we talked about <coughs> we talked about uh, pointers being uh, uh, just a uh, simple variable like any other variable. The difference between a pointer and um, a regular variable is that a pointer is an unsigned integer, not a normal one. Uh, and the difference between an unsigned integer that we have for a pointer is that uh, you add one to a, a regular integer, one will be added. When you add one to a pointer, the size of the target will be added to it. So if I have a pointer to an integer and I add one to it, because size of an integer is four, four will be added to it. If I have a pointer to a car and that car is 200 bytes and I add one to it, then 200 will be added to it. That's the difference. The pointer is used to keep the address of other stuff in it. And we talked about um, memory management and we said that uh, Whenever you create any type of variable, regular variable or arrays in your program, what happens is that the compiler dedicates a piece of your program, memory of your program within your executable to, to the values you actually add to it, uh, to the um, to the um, just give me a second. So as I was saying, uh, the variables you create and the, uh, the arrays you create are within your executable. Therefore, when your program gets executed, operating system grabs your program, puts it in memory, and all your variables come with your program into memory, you use them. And if you get, by mistake, get out of the bond boundary of your stuff, all you're going to hurt is your program. It's going to crash, right? Because you got out of your own memory and ruined your own program. We said this is all good and dandy, but the problem is that sometimes uh, at compile time, you don't know how much memory you need. We gave the example for the uh, uh, a simple example of saying you're getting few numbers and printing them in reverse order. And if I don't know how many numbers I have, then it is impossible to write the program. Therefore, we found out that we can actually have the C program ask the operating system to give you the memory instead of automatically doing it. So instead of creating integer A5, having five integers, I can create a pointer. And then while the program is running, which means not at compile time, while the program is running, we actually investigate how much, pro how much memory we need and then ask the operating system to give us the memory using the command or statement. Sorry. OK. Which statement we use to ask the operating system to give us memory? Mm, pass. Which command we use to? Pass. To there is a statement we use to ask operating system to give us memory. New. New. So when you say new, you're essentially telling to the operating system, I want memory. Now, this new can ask for one memory. You can say integer pointer A is equal new int, which means one memory, one integer, or new car, new building, new school. It gives you one memory, whatever the size of that one memory is, one unit. Therefore, your pointer is pointing to one thing. Or you can say, I want 50 cars. New car, 50. I want 200 integers. New int, 200. And therefore, it gives you that many things. And uh, like you do it with an array, if you add the, uh, the square bracket and the number of elements, that's how it's going to do it. These are all review for these things, OK? So when I go, I'm going to go through it, and then we're going to go to the new subjects. So new topics, don't worry. What I'm saying is that 
when you allocate only one thing, the syntax is different. It means it doesn't have the number of the elements. And when you want many things, uh, the syntax uh, is, has an extra thing, which is square bracket, a number of things that we have. Like we have over there at line 81, which I am getting new name, number of names, which means na many names. Are we OK down to this point? So after doing all these things, because I asked the operating system to give me the, uh, the memory, that the program is not aware that how much memory, or if any, <coughs> is allocated. Because of that fact, when the program ends, your executable is removed by the operating system from the memory, and within it, all your local variables. But what you asked as new, it's still in memory, and that's memory leak. Because of that, we have to make sure for every single new that we have, Somewhere in our logic, we have a delete, delete to delete the, uh, the values that we are removing. Now, if I have only one thing, I have a delete. So I write delete, and I delete one thing. But if like line 80, 81, like line, do you see back there line 81? Is that clear? Is it, can you see like 81, line 81 over there? OK, beautiful. So if at line 81 I'm doing like that, I need to still delete an array. But what is the difference between deleting an array and a deleting a single element? You can simply say pass if you're not in a, in, in still not sync with class. <laughs> you could put brackets afterwards. So the difference is that. If you are allocating an array, you don't put anything. If you're allocating an array, you put a bracket after the delete. It means, hey, what's deleting is not a single thing. It's a series of things. Delete them all. If it's only one thing, you don't put bracket over there. Like that, if you have 50 things allocated, it deletes them all. The pro the, one of the most common way of leaking memory is that you allocate an array and you delete without a bracket. When you delete without a bracket, it only deallocates the first element. The rest of them will stay in memory. And therefore, you're going to have memory. OK, so that was the concept of dynamic memory allocation. Are we all OK with this? Problems? He doesn't have problem. How about the others? <laughs> Suggestions? Objections? All right, so you la answered last, right? You're going to be my next victim. OK. So, <clears throat> so we created this thing over here. And I'm just going to quickly go through it. We said that we have uh, a class over here called the name. This class, uh, um, fast structure, potatoes, potatoes. Remember, I told you when I say C++, I say class. It's, C, it's, it's, it's a struct. If I say struct, it's a class. They're all the same. OK? So I have a, a struct, a class called name that has two attributes over there. Well, what is the difference uh, between a, uh, wh why did I call that thing an attribute? Because uh, it's, um, it's, it's an attribute, it's also a member function. Thank yeah. you, member function, because it's a member variable. We said member variables, the variables that are inside a class or a structure are not called variables anymore. In C++, we refer to refer them to as member variables. In object-oriented terminology, we refer them as attributes, specifications, data, things like that. OK, so those are attributes. So we have those attributes in, in the struct, struct name that are dynamically allocated uh, whenever we want them. And then we wrote several functions to deal with it and, and, and uh, take care of the dynamic memory allocation. Yes. Of course I can. That's why I asked back there, can you see it or not? OK. Is it, is it good? Is it good? All right. So then we created a series of functions. Then we created a series. I just wanted to be in the picture. Okay. <laughs> when, when we, when we uh, 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 
uh, then we created a series of functions to do dynamic memory allocation for this uh, name structure or name class of mine. Name structure of mine, let's put it that way. So we pass the reference of a name, okay? Reference of a name becomes a new name for name, so I can do whatever I want to do. I passed a specific name and surname to it. I made sure that the names exist, and if they exist, they actually have data in them because the definition of uh, uh, a C string is. Can you repeat the question? The definition of C string. When I say C string, what is the definition of C string? It's an array of characters. Array of characters with array of characters who are array of characters who are. What is the difference between a string and an, an array of characters? A C string. Task. Pass. Pass. Null terminator. Null terminator. Kill me now, IPC144, okay? Uh, array of characters, the difference between C string and array of characters is that the end of data in C string is stamped or uh, set by a null character at the end. Therefore, the first two, name and surname, guarantee that the name is, the, the, there is something there, it's pointing to something. The second one guarantees that at that something there is data. If the very first one is null, this goes false. It means there is nothing in it, right? It's as if I say water bottle. There is no water bottle on the table, correct? So that's the first one. That's the first checking. Now I'm saying water bottle. So there is a water bottle over there. The second statement that says name zero actually checks to see if, it's in, if we have water in there or not. I know there is a water bottle, but do I have anything in it? So if this if statement guarantees, and that only, uh, that is applied for strings because the logic is that way. For an integer array, we might do different things. I don't know. But so, so integer arrays and things like that, they are not necessarily not terminated or they don't have any kind of termination. We usually have their size in hand. In this case, uh, uh, we don't have the size, but we know where the data ends, and where the data ends at the beginning, it means there is no data. We good? We okay? All right. Yes, ma'am. Wait, 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 wait. Go ahead. Are you following class? Why do we have um, curly braces at the end of the character instead of bracket? Okay, so why do we have curly brackets after M name and M surname? Actually, we shouldn't, because we haven't covered it yet. But at the beginning of the semester, I said there is a universal way of initializing things. There is a universal way of initializing things. So instead of putting assignment in front of, a, of something, remember we said the difference between initialization and setting? Do you remember that day? You want me to recall it, what it was? So the difference between initialization and setting, we said what is the difference between, so if I have a function, just to be able to give you an example for initial. So uh, we would we, say integer a is equal to 10, integer b, and b is set to 10. We said what is the difference between these two? The first one over here is initializing a to 10, and after that a has 10. In here, b is created with garbage in it, then the garbage is overwritten by 10. So they are completely different beasts. The first one, A never existed without anything other than 10 in it. In the second one, B first has some value which happens to be garbage, and then it's overwritten. Therefore, the assignment here is initialization. The assignment here is setting. Confusing? Yes. So better, it's better instead of using assignment to use the universal or aggregate way to do this. So that sets 10. That means A is being initialized to 10. It, they don't, there is no confusion between that assignment thingy. And if you don't put anything in it, it means put the default value that it should get when it's nothing. And nothingness for an integer is 0. 
Nothingness for a pointer is null pointer. Nothing there for us for a C string is all the things to be set to zero or for an array. Are we okay now to this point? So this is what we covered a long time ago in the galaxy far, far away. Now, what we are saying over here is that actually to give validate what you just said, this is something very new that you can actually initialize attributes of uh, structure. We didn't have that one in C, C++. So to actually uh, be able to teach something at the end of the session, I'm going to remove those. When you do something like this, when you create a name, if there is a guarantee that name and surname are, are both null pointer when the name is getting created. If I remove them, creation of name will have garbage in them. Okay? And it's something new. When I say new, I mean 10 years ago. Okay? Five years ago. Something like that. I think after C++ 11, we, we, we were allowed to do that. Um, uh, before that, we had to actually set them. We could never initialize them like that. Okay? So I will remove them to be able to get to a point. Okay? So <clears throat> are we okay down to this point? We are, I'm getting good questions. I'm happy. Okay? So... Uh, and I'm in no rush to go to the, get to the topic and teach it because I want you to first get clear, comp your brains get set to what we are talking about, and then after that, we're going to jump into new topics. Okay, so first let's get everything crystal clear. So we said we create names to set the, the name to whatever it is. In the if statement over here guarantees that uh, uh, the names that are coming in are actually data, and then it's going to say, now that I have the data and they are valid data, let me see what is the size of the name. Add one for null termination, allocate that much character, and make the name point to it. See what is the size of the surname, add one for null pointer, allocate that much character, and make surname point to it. And now, shoe fits the foot exactly. So I don't need to check to see if any size or anything. I simply say copy the name into the allocated memory that is specified for it. Copy the surname into the allocated memory exactly uh, to, to the size that is, you know, we know what we're doing. Okay, so that's that. That's my set. Then we, met, well, then we did a deallocate. We said, okay, wipe out the memory of the, of the what should we call it? Uh, wipe out the memory of the, uh, the, the, the structure. So it receives a reference of the name. It deletes M name surname. We don't need to check to see if there is memory allocated or not because we have the sacred rule that after deleting or whenever a pointer is unused, we set it to null. We have that sacred rule in dynamic memory allocation that we have to always follow. So because of that, we don't need to check for anything. All we need to do is to say delete. If it's null, delete won't do anything. If it's not null, delete will delete it, and life is good, and we are on our way to deallocating the information out of that. Are we good with the deallocate? Yes, sir. Wait, 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 wait. I wish I, I had like 30 of these and could give it to all of you. Yes. Sorry, uh, Fred. Yes, far okay. that. <laughs> okay. Okay. I, I just want to ask. It looks like to me when we want to use the dynamic memory allocation, this is kind of you know standard procedure. You know, new and then you get the link, check check if there's a water water bottle there, and then like uh, you know copy to the memory and then have a delete. It, you think it is a what? One more time. One more the question. I kind, kind of standard. I mean, you know. You cannot understand it. No, no, no. I mean, is it? Is this a kind of standard? One, two, three, four. Oh no, 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 no. Uh, I'll get to the standard later. I'm just giving you the the essentials now, and later on, I have slides for it to tell you how to do it. Number step one, do this. Step two, do that. But for now, let's follow just your logic. When you create a pointer, set it to null, because it's not pointing to anything. When you want to do the allocation, size what. See what is the size of what you want, allocate that much memory, then copy the data to it. Do your work with it after you're done, the allocate null. That's always the set. Okay? These are these functions can be used in many different places. We'll see it soon. But uh, yeah. So it's uh, that that's 
the sequence of these functions happen to be kind of in a good thing, but not necessarily they're going to be called in this order. OK? All right. So we know now what the allocate does. Oh, and the allocate, always set it to null after, because we don't know when the deallocate is going to get called. So it has to always set it to null after. So we have that one. When I'm reading something, how do I read it? So obviously, if we were doing C programming, what would we say, OK, uh, I'm going to have, uh, that would tell you, OK, I'll, I'm going to have series of names. They're going to, so we're going to say, how many names? I say, I don't know. So give me the maximum thing you think. I would say 20. Then you would create an array of 40 just in case. So that's the thing goes in ways. Then for the first name and last name, you say, what is the maximum first name? I would say 20. You would say, OK, the heck with it. I'll make it 40. OK, something like that. So we do exactly that logic. We use that logic. But the difference is that that big chunk that I put just in case thingy, I do it as a local variable inside the function that is extracting the data. So I don't have 5,000 packages of this. It's only this one. And when read is gone, they are all gone. So I'm not wasting any memory. So what do I do in here? I'm going to say character name 41. That's 41 characters that I want to get. Character surname 61. That's that. Now I'm going to say over here, get me the name. Later on, you're going to learn how to actually get it so it doesn't exceed 41. But for now, we are just doing it this way. Then I'm going to get the surname. Now I have the exact size. I'm going to set the values to those using the set function. Are we OK with this? Now, one of the people, one of the students told me, hey, like this, you are, have, you, you are actually allocating 100 and uh, 102 characters in your executable, right? And I said, yes, that's true. So the person said, could, could we do that dynamically too? Why not? If you don't want, if you, you want your executable to be small, there is nothing holding you to even have your temporary big values done dynamically and deleted afterwards. I could see because I want to, I want to make sure that uh, this is not going to be a permanent thing. I can simply say new character 41. It's the exact same thing. So now it becomes dynamic. And now I'm, I'm wasting zero bytes, as essentially, new character. But what's important is to remember to delete them. Afterwards, so even the temporary values that I'm holding in here are dynamic now. No difference, right? Now I can even be more generous about it. To make sure things won't fail, I can make this one 64 and make this one 128. Make it even bigger. Who cares? Because it's dynamic, it's going to deallocate it afterwards. Just a temporary thing. No problem. Are we OK with this? All right? Yes, sir. What if we don't pass any values? What if we don't pass any values to what? You are talking about you are talking about validating users entry? Yeah, instead of like new character 64, we just don't repeat the new character. Okay, let, let's get one thing clear. One thing clear, C++ is an exact language. Nothing happens like JavaScript. <laughs> OK? It's not like that. OK? It's, it's not like, let's put a variable and then put a double in it. And then if I want, I can put string in it. I can't do that. If you want 64, it's 64. Nothing is set by default. If you put nothing in here, you get syntax error. Because you're saying, give me some memory. OK? So the compiler doesn't know. Thanks for the question. Are we good? OK? So now, do I need to set this name and surname null after this? Following the standards, because we are rookies, yes. As a professional, no. Because I know that these are local variables in this function, right? And they are just about to die. At, I'm at the end of the function. Who cares if it's null or not? It's like. I'm having it disposable. Like, have you ever washed a Tim Hortons disposable coffee cup before you throw it in trash? No, right? It's the same thing. 
So it is going to die. So if you understand that fact, don't set it to null after. If you don't, just think, if you, in hesitation, do it. So if I'm a rookie, I just started, I'm going to say over here, name is equal to, surname is equal to null PTL. Just because I don't understand dynamic memory allocation very well yet. So I said any unused pointers, you set it to null. Those pointers are not going to even be used after, so who cares if it's null or not, OK? So that was the question that was asked. So this read is going to read. Now, I want to know if my class is empty, if, if my name is empty or not. So if the first one is null or the second one is null, I can keep going with different conditions to see if it's empty. This is empty thingy. This is saying it's not, it's, it's better to say it's in a, it's, I would say is valid type of a thing. But empty essentially means safe empty state. What is a safe empty state? When your class, class's attributes are in a position that you can recognize there is nothing in it. That's a safe empty state. You know? Have you ever, like, uh, no, nah, you don't want to know that. I just want to say, yeah. anyway. So you leave this, like, it, what I'm saying is that um, I, I wished I had an indicator that, that I could see if this, the, uh, the mug is empty or not when I'm drinking coffee out of it. Or I, otherwise, I'm going to go, oops, there is nothing on it. That action should not happen. OK, you should look at it and say it's empty. OK, that is empty over there to tell you that this is empty. Don't print it. Don't bother. Why did we do that? Because we are checking it so many times and we don't need to. Now, the logic of empty could be different. Like that, I can add that zero thingy to it here, too. I can say or name zero being zero, right? So I could add those logic to if I want. This is a safe, like, it's safe empty state, it's called. So in here, I'm saying if it's not empty, print it. If it is empty, say there is no name in there. We good? And then in main, I'm doing the dynamic memory allocation that I told you. You know what it is. I don't want to go through the thing. You know exactly how everything works in here. This essentially uh, allocates, asks user how many uh, things you want, allocates that much memory, gets the values, prints it in reverse order, and uh, passes it through. And we are all set and done. And that's it. Are we OK? All right. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to compile and run it. All right, so in here I'm going to say two, Fred, Soleil, uh, John, Do, and I have them in reverse order, right? Well, there is one thing that you need to know, that is this one. In here, if I have this. What is going to get printed over there right after I allocated it? If I run this, I'm going to say two and look at that. It crashed. Why did it crash? Why did the program crash? This is why. Let's go through it. I'll come over here. That's, I set that one null. I'm going to get how many names I want. I'm going to say two, OK? And then I'm come over here. I allocate memory for the names. Take a look. What are the values of first name and last name? Some garbage value. Remember that curly brackets? Those prevented these. Now we are back in old days of C++. When you create something, you have garbage into it. So for this, we need to not only have an is empty function, but also we need to have a, where is my is empty? We need to have <laughs> set empty. Next time, come with coffee. Set empty, and I'm going to say name reference n. And in here, I'm going to say n dot, actually, so n dot 
name is n dot surname uh, to null PTR. Okay. Now, if I do this, I can come back over here, and when I create this, I'm going to write uh, a loop for size t i set to zero i less than number of of shoot number of names. Now in here I'm going to say n uh, set empty uh, n i. So now I know it it's it sounds like it's it's stupid. See how much easier it made the new version of C++ when they added that thing, okay? So now, now I'm setting everything that I allocated to empty because I know nothing is, nothing inside is set. Now when I run the program and I get to, and I get to this point, build errors, why? Oh, stupid compiler, okay. <laughs> All right. So now I come over here. I ask for the names. I'm going to set over here two. Hit enter. Go to the next one. It comes in here. I have g garbage all the way through, as you see. Now the first one is set to empty. Second one. Now I come out. Now when I take a look at n, now n is null. So this will not crash anymore because it's going to say it is empty, and it's going to say no name instead. So it's not going to try print something that doesn't belong to it, and therefore in you, your output would be no name. Are you okay with this? All right. Step. Yes, sir. You're talking about the curly bracket thingy? Yes, but for now, forget about it. Assume that we can't. Okay, have the default of the system on, we can't. Are we good down to this point? Everything's okay? All right, so now I'm going to commit DMA reviewed. So I'll try to continue this habit. As, as I teach, I'm going to push and commit as at each milestone so you can see exactly what was done so you can actually follow well. Okay? So now, in here I'm going to say 0, 1, DMA review. When we started this semester, we talked about when we started this semester, who was the last person I asked a question? It was you, okay. When we started the semester, we talked about three different major pillars of object orientation. These pillars were, were number one? Encapsulation. Encapsulation, two? Um, abstraction. Abstraction is for, abstraction is pillar for any programming language ever. So abstraction is, it has a special meaning in object orientation. But abstraction essentially means take what you need and throw everything else away. So to write any program, you need to have that skill. In object orientation, in class designs, it becomes most focused. But that's not one of the pillars of specifically dynamic uh, uh, object orientation. It was encapsulation, number two, remember? You can pass it if you want to. Pass. Polymorphism, so encapsulation, polymorphism, and inheritance. Inheritance, thank you. Encapsulation, polymorphism, inheritance. Polymorphism was, do you remember what it was? Doing the same thing in different ways, thank you. Doing the same thing in different ways was polymorphism. We've already done that with operator overloading. And we said operator overloading, function overloading. We did that with function overloading. And function overloading, we said it's a lame representation of 
polymorphism because it's not really polymer, it's a fake polymorphism. Remember that? So keep that in mind. And then the next thing we talked about was inheritance. Remember what inheritance was? Inheritance? Inheritance? Uh, reuse the data and behaviors of another class. Reusing your code. So when you want to make a motorcycle, you don't reinvent everything from scratch. You're going to say motorcycle is a bicycle. So you don't need to explain how a motorcycle is written and everything. You're just going to say motorci motorcycle is a bicycle with an engine. Okay? So you get an already existing definition class in what you have, and then you build upon it. Therefore, less programming, better design. Are we okay with this thing? And the last one was encapsulation that was... You know how it's how we use it, but what is the definition of encapsulation? Uh, Read it. Integration of data. <laughs> 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 he, he, he knew I'm gonna ask. You. It's, it's 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 right in front of it in a web page. Encapsulation is the primary yada 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 yada. But what is the encapsulation, my dear? Can I remember? Huh? No, no, you just just your your idea of what encapsulation is. It's a very simple concept. Uh, combining the data and something something. What is something something? Public and private. <laughs> no, that's a side effect of thing. Combining the data and something something. Becomes a no, no, what is something something? <laughs> functions. Functions, okay. The, putting the data and functions together, putting the data and behavior together, putting the app attributes and methods together. We said as we have, as we have member variables, we call them member variables. We can have functions, we call them member functions. You put the data and behavior together. Instead of passing that, let me just remove this foo thingy here because we don't need it. Instead of passing the name to set and tell to some mysterious action coming from thin air, to set the name to something, I can ask the name to set itself. Why questionable face? Okay, try. The fact, the fact that you didn't understand and tried to digest, that was encapsulation. <laughs> so, see, he didn't understand and tried to digest. If he didn't understand and he tried to digest, that was C programming. Okay? So if, if you see something is wrong, you can fix it yourself, right? You do stuff by yourself. That's encapsulation. So we want to start to encapsulate this thing. Instead of having a name being passed to functions that don't belong to anything, these are actually things that name need to do. So let's do that. So step one, we have to bring these functions inside the name. So if I want the set, if I want this set, how many people wants, want to break? Seriously, no one? Because it was a very good time before, before we start, but it's OK. Anyway, so I'm going to take this set thingy. We know that we can bring it inside the name. So I'll do that. I'll bring it inside name. So set is now one of the methods, member functions, of the name, okay? But there is a problem in here. I want to see how can I nicely explain that. 20 years and every time I reach to this point, I pause. And it's something so obvious that it's very difficult to explain. Each action of you knows your specifications. If I say hello, so I am saying hello. Would you please say hello? hello. Did you feel the difference? If I put a curtain, if I put a curtain, if I put a curtain here and nobody sees us, I say hello and she say hello, you know which one was who? How? Because my hello function uses my attributes 
of tone of voice. Her hello function uses her attributes of tone of voice. Therefore, it's going to be, you know, you know what I mean, right? Each behavior of us uses our specification to generate whatever it's supposed to generate. You OK? Right? All right. Set should do the same. You don't need to pass the name to the set. Set is inside the name. Set has access to all the attributes of the name. So in C terms, now I'm going to ruin this by bringing C, C terms in it. Each member, each at, all the attributes of a class, all the attributes of a structure are global to its member functions. And they are accessible by member functions. Therefore, this set does not need a name being passed to it. This set does not need to say, I want n dot m name, n dot m surname, n dot n dot. There is no need for n dot schmiggly dingy over here because set knows it has an m name and it can use it. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? Let's continue. Deallocate. If I want to deallocate the name, I'm going to tell to the name, deallocate your data. I don't need to pass the name to it. I simply ask it to do so. Therefore, this is not needed, this is not needed, and this is not needed, and this is not needed. Are we okay with this? All right, let's continue. And you're going to see how the code is going to change after this. In here, I'm saying read, right? I'm saying read. So read once, so I have to, I have to tell to the name, read your data. Therefore, no name is needed to be passed to it. And, and, where is my, oh. And the set over here doesn't need to get anything like that, and it's done. Because, because my hand, my hand knows where my head is, <laughs> OK? It's, all, it's like that. Each action of you has access to other actions of you, OK? If I want to call the walk method of mine, walk can utilize the movement of my feet. I don't need to tell to walk move Farda's feet. <laughs> Walk will do it. It's the same thing. Read can set itself because set is part of itself. OK? Oh, I just copied. I, I, I thought I moved. I want to know if, I want to know if, my name is empty or not. Why did I put a const over here when I was creating it? Why did I put a const? Why did I put a const over there? To make sure that um, it doesn't get modified. It doesn't get modified. It's not because is empty is a query. You're asking to see if name is empty or not. By asking someone something, that's in English it doesn't make sense. To check something on someone, because asking means getting in English, but in here I'm saying by checking to something to see if it has a specific type of a situation or not, you are not changing them. If you look at me, I'm not going to lose weight. Right? I wish I could, but I can't. So you follow what I'm saying? OK, so that's that. So I am guaranteeing that the name is not changed in here, OK? to check to see if it's empty or not. So how can I enforce that when it becomes a member? Because if I remove this one, and I remove this one, 
and I remove this one, I know that is empty now, have access to everything. But the problem is that if by mistake I write over here m name is equal to something, I can't. To make a method, to make a member function not be able to change its owner, you add a const here. That means this method cannot change its owner. So if by mistake I say over here m name is set to, uh, uh, I don't know, um, new uh, character 50, it's not going to allow, it's going to tell me expression must be a modifiable value. You cannot do it. All the member variables are constant to this method. So this is not possible. Not possible since the method is a constant one. Are we good? Are we good? Set empty. I want to set the name to empty. I'll bring it in. Let me write, uh, so, so in here, and I have to actually, I'm removing all these things because there are no parameters in here anymore. So, or just remove the parameter. Uh, and this one doesn't have a parameter. This one is okay. This one doesn't have a name parameter. Yeah, because uh, yeah, that, the, the help would have been difficult. So now in here, I'm going to remove the reference over here. This cannot be constant because it is changing something. Sets to sets the attributes of name to null PTR. Okay. Now I want to print something. Okay. Print again receives a constant name because the logic dictates when you print something you don't. Okay. So you do that. I see everybody's yawning. I'm going to finish this and you go for a break and come back. And then we'll continue. OK, so bear with me. So now I don't need to pass anything. I just can check to see if it's not empty. And I do not need to, to tell what these are belong to. So it's simply I'm saying print yourself. But make sure you are not empty when you are doing that. OK, so therefore I don't need to have a parameter for the name object in here. OK, and take a look at this. You see print is calling is empty. Print has to be constant too because it doesn't change anything, right? And which is very fine. It is not changing anything. But take a look. If this wasn't the const, I couldn't have called it. So in a constant method, in a constant member function, you're only allowed to call other constants. You cannot call other things that possibly change. It is very restrict and, and it works perfectly. That's why you have to obsessively follow this logic. Now, having done that, my main change is like this. Instead of saying n1 yada yada yada, I'm going to say over here n1 dot set empty. Set yourself to empty. I'm going to say n0. Print yourself. I'm going to say n1. Read the value into yourself. And in here, again, print yourself. Wow, I had, did I have, did I create this with massive amount of the memory leak? Holy moly, this program has memory leak. Shoot, I have to fix the other one. Because I'm deleting the n, it deletes all the names, but not all the dynamic stuff inside the main. It's bad. I forgot to do that. I have to fix the other one, too. So, so in here, at the end, before I delete everything, I have to have another for loop. Where is my for loop? I'm lazy. So I have to bring this over here. Before doing anything, 
I have to say n dot deallocate. Oh my goodness, we wrote programs with, with lots of memory leak. Lots and lots of memory leak. Okay, you see? Yeah, and we're going to fix that problem today, by the way. What I just showed you, somebody who have done this programming for 20 something years, to make a mistake like that, just imagine what's going to happen to a person is, that is new in this language. Okay, we're going to fix that today. Okay, we're going to make sure that doesn't happen today. All right, so now I have an almost object-oriented thing. It's not fully object-oriented. I have almost an object-oriented thing over here, and that's that. So uh, if I run the program, it works the exact same way. There is no difference in here whatsoever. Um, so if I run it, you will see that it, it works exactly the same way if, if it doesn't have an error. Now I'm going to say over here, too. It's going to say no name. I'm going to put over here Fred and Soleil, and then Jack, uh, whatever, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to print in reverse order. So that's the dynamic thing that we have done. Any questions now to this point? Yes. Oh, that you, shush, after the, class, after the break. That's the next thing I'm going to talk about. You just made the huge mistake, so, and it needs lots of explanation, so I'm not going to answer that question. Do not listen to this guy. He's an evil guy. <laughs> okay, are we good? Okay, five minutes break, and then we'll come back. Five, ten minutes break, and then we'll come back. Please remind me to resume recording. So we kind of put the data and behavior together. Now, isn't it a big mess? Seriously, when you think about it, just take a look, seriously. Just take a look at this. Like, I start, like, halfway through, I don't know even where I am. This is not a good thing to do, OK? It, you almost never put the entire function inside a class as a member function. You just put the prototype inside the class, and you bring the body out so the, what the class does and how it does it becomes two different things, header file and a CPP file. So that's, so if I, if I want to do the same thing in here, instead of having this, I'm just going to copy the whole thing in here. And bring it outside. So I'll bring those functions outside. The problem is that when I put the functions outside, how do I say that the function that is outside actually belongs to a class? How do I do that? First of all, in the class, I only put the prototype. So I'm just going to remove the body and put the prototype. Remove the body and just the semicolon. Remove the body, put a semicolon. By the way, this code has a, 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 two things I wanted to mention. Uh, so let, let me first do this, and then we're going to exp uh, explain. So I'm just removing all the, so now when you look at this, even, you can even minimize the, the comments just to, just to see how clean it can be. Now when you're looking at it, you see name is a class that has a first name and a surname, which that thing is, sucks. I have to fix it because I say name has a name. What the heck is that? I've got to fix that. I'm going to make this given name. So a name has a given name and a surname, something like that. Okay, but anyways. But a name can set itself to something, can deallocate itself, can read itself from console, can check to see if it's empty or not, can set itself to empty, and can print itself. Okay? So now I have the list of everything. I don't have to look at how it's done. How many times you actually open the hood of your car to see how it actually ac accelerates? All you need to do is you have to push the thing, the damn thing, and it goes, right? That's, all, that's the extent of your knowledge. It's the same thing over here. In the header file of your structure that you have, I'm going to change it to a module soon, you only have the prototypes of the functions, not everything. OK? Are we OK with this? All right. So and then when you. When you want to come over here and indicate that this set is not a standalone function, 
but it's a member function, you write the name of the class it belongs to with a scope resolution. That's, that means set belongs to name. It's not standing by itself. The allocate belongs to name. Read belongs to name. Is empty belongs to name. Set empty belongs to name. Print belongs to name. And done. So now I have the classes, the attributes of its functions, and the implementation of its functions. Are we okay with this? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So you want me to make it bigger? Oh, you're, you guys talk here. I thought he was very, I thought he's talking to me, but he's talking to his friend. Okay. So that's, that's how we do it. Okay. Number one. Number two. Remember talking about me standing in line at Tim Hortons, want to get coffee, and I don't have money, and I want to ask one of you guys. Remember that example that I gave you? You don't remember, do you? Impossible. I do that in every single class. Anyways, so I'll repeat myself. For all those people who have already heard this, my class, for some reason, lost their short-term memory, so I'm going to explain it again. Imagine me and this beautiful lady are standing in the lineup of Tim Hortons. I'm in front, she's behind me, and I want to get coffee. And I see I don't have money, right? I can simply ask her. I know she's my student. Probably she's going to accept it. I was like, can I borrow $1.50 to get a small coffee? I forgot my wallet. Probably because I'm his, her prof, she's going to say, I'm going to do that to, you know, so, so he likes me and gives me more marks. So she's going to, so she's going to give me $1.50. So 99% that's going to happen. Or even maybe better, she's going to say, oh, don't worry, I'll take care of it for you. Okay, things like that, all right? So everything's going to go well. I'm going to have my coffee. She's going to have my coffee. We're going to come back to class, continue the lecture. Are we okay? Now, rewind the scenario. We are standing over here in the line up. I'm sitting here. She's sit standing behind me. And I see I don't have money. I say, oh, I know her. I put my hand in her pocket <laughs> and pick $1.50. <laughs> What's going to happen? Slap in her face and scream and, right? Right? Why? Because I invaded her privacy. That's what it is. Look at my structure over there, OK? I created a structure like that, right? But I can come in main, put my hand inside N0's pocket, and set M surname to null pointer. Right? Right? I can do that. No error, perfectly OK. It's going to ruin everything, crash, memory leak, everything. How do I prevent that? That's what we call privacy, that I say, do not listen to this guy. OK? So privacy is this. I'll come over here and I'll say, OK, what I don't want people to see, I make them private. What I want people to see, I'll make public. Now, this is a very crude and ugly way of doing it now. I'll explain why. I have to look at my logic. As I told you, nobody knows how the engine works. Does engine have any functionalities? Of course it does. But those functions are not public, right? So many of these functions, I have to check to see if they actually need to be public. So it's not that attributes are private, methods are public. That's not the case. Some attributes may need to be public. And some functions may need to be private. You have to investigate. You have to sit for hours and days, try to design your system, and see what needs to be private, what needs to be public, obsessively think about it and do it. Exactly like making stuff like you make a variable constant, you make an object private, parts of an object. So now if I do something like this, that's a very bad example because I didn't go through the logic to see what function needs to be private. We'll take care of that later. But when I take a look at it now in here, what is it going to say? It's going to say, hey, what you're doing, member, name, M surname, declared in line 10 is inaccessible. You cannot set it up. That's the slap in the face and a scream that don't put your hand in my pocket now. Got it? That's now 
we have an encapsulated object. We have data and behavior relative to that data packaged into a class, and we made that class private and public. Now, question. <clears throat> interview question. This, these questions actually come in, in very fre frequently in interviews. What is the difference? Whose turn is it? Is it yours? Whose turn? OK, so since you said no, I'm going to ask you. Anyway, what is the difference between a structure in C and a structure in, and a, and a class in C++? <laughs> class is one Class has, uh, by default, private. No. Uh, structures in C cannot have functions. Thank you. Structures in C cannot have functions. Classes in C++ can have functions inside. Are we OK with this? All right. Now, this is number one. So this question is going to be in your test, midterm, all these things. OK. So number one, what is the difference between a structure in uh, uh, C and a class in C++. The next question is this. What is the difference between a structure in C++ and a class in C++? Take a look. If I write over here class, I still compile and run it. It's going to be the exact same thing. No difference. So. What is that? Like if somebody asks you and you're verbally telling them, what is the difference between a struct and a class? The answer is nothing. They are identical, except when you create a structure, everything inside is public by default, which you said, who said, you said, you said. I don't know, somebody said, OK? You said, OK. And a class, when you create a class and you don't say anything, everything is private by default. That's the difference. So classes, structures in C++, potatoes, potatoes. One is public by default. The other one is private by default. Are we OK with this? All right. Now, as you noticed, I made a huge mistake in my design. And I actually did, I have to go fix the notes for the last class, too. I created the main. I created the array. I called the set for. I call the read for the, uh, so in this case, actually, you see set could be private, actually. See, in here, set empty is called, fine. Uh, but uh, like, it, like is empty is not called. Uh, any of these are not called, so they could be all private. But anyways, I will do that later. What is private and public, we'll set with the end. But what I'm saying is that <clears throat> how many of you, if I actually gave you this, will actually remember that you have to set everything to empty? And how many of you will remember that you have to actually deallocate everything at the end? It is impossible to remember these things. That's why we have a specific mechanism in C++ and all object-oriented languages that we can actually list all the things we want to be done after, right after the object is created to be done automatically. So you have no control over it to call it or anything. It will be called automatically, this procedure, it will be called automatically when the object is born. You have no control over it. You cannot say, I don't want it to be called. It cannot be. Or after it was born, you cannot call it because it doesn't make sense, right? So these procedures exist. We have a procedure that we can create in that procedure, in that procedure, do everything we want to do right before the object is about to die. So essentially, the first one is, when you want to come and start eat at this table, you clean up the table, and make it ready. That's the first one. So you're saying, as soon as I come to the table, automatically the table is going to get clean and nice and you sit and eat. And after you finish eating, right before you leave, you take all the garbage and everything from the table, you clean it up, and you go. That's the second one. Are we OK? So the first one helps you build the object to construct the object. 
The second one helps you to destroy the object when it's gone. Now, many people or even books and profs refer to these as functions. These are not functions at all because a function can be called. These procedures cannot be called. And their name is actually a little crazy. Let me show you. So to create something that happens right after the object is born, you have to create a procedure with the same name of the class. So in here, you have to create name like that. OK? But it doesn't have a return type because it's not a function. It is not supposed to be called to return anything. So it doesn't have a return type. The second one, so this one constructs the, uh, the object right after it is born. The other one, you put a tilde at the beginning and you put the name again. This one destructs, destructs the object right before it is gone. So if you implement these two things properly, you don't need to worry about allocation and the allocation stuff. You follow what I'm saying? So now, the, I'm going to actually create this. So I'll create the, uh, the definition for this. So uh, that's the destructor. And I'm going to create the constructor. So that's the constructor. In the constructor, what do I need to do? I need to set it to empty, right? So in here, I'm going to say set empty. Done, correct? What do I do in a destructor to make sure everything is fine and dandy? You allocate. Correct? Now I can make all those things private. So in here, I'm going to say deallocate. Nobody needs to do. I'll do it myself. And set empty. Nobody needs to do. I'll do it myself when needed. OK? And now let's fix the set function. The set function of mine, because it's set, and you are setting an object to new values, will cause memory leak. Imagine that I already have a name called Fred Soleil, as I always do. OK? So, so name already, so M name is already pointing to Fred. M surname is already pointing to Soleil. So they are pointing to values. When I come over here, wants to set it to something new, what's going to happen? It's going to check to see those names, if they those, if those name, name, if those, if those name exist. If it does, it allocates memory and overrides the address pointing to Fred now to something else. So that Fred will be lost, memory leak. So if I am setting something, another sacred rule of, of a dynamic memory allocation is to wipe out the memory you're just about to set, always. So before I do anything in here, I need to make sure that I deallocate it. not even checking to see if those things are valid. If, because if somebody's setting their name to an invalid thing, that name should be empty, right? So I'm going to say, if you are setting me, first let me deallocate. So if it's empty, no problem. Deallocate won't do anything. It's going to remain empty. But if it has something already, that's going to get rid of data, therefore no memory leak. OK? Now, going back to name. Now that I have these two, I'm going to call it no argument constructor, and this one 
is destructive. OK? So now, let me, let me take a look at it. I'm going to go back to May. I am creating. I am creating lots of names. Do I need to set anything to empty? No. Because my as when I when I and actually I'm going to write you a, a sample code so you'll see how it works. Now, if I if I actually create ten names, ten objects are born, right? So ten constructors will be called, and they're all going to set everything to empty. Then I'll do everything else. And after I'm done, do I need to delete the individual one? No, I just delete the array. When the array is deleted, all the objects are going to be gone, right? Right before they're gone, the destructors are going to get called. Simple and straightforward. We good? Now, take a look. See what's, what I'm going to do in here. Just for testing, it's just for debugging. You never print anything in a constructor or a destructor. So what I'm going to create over here to keep track of what I, what, how many things I have, in here I'm going to create a global variable. I'm going to call it uh, 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 size t counter. And I'm going to set it to 0. So count, that's by the way counted, countner. OK, counter. OK. Now in here I'm going to come in the constructor and I'm going to say, uh, see out creating, creating name number plus plus counter. So I'm going to actually print the name. I'm going to say that it's being, and as it creates, I'm going to add one to the global variable just to keep track of how many things are created. I want to test it. Now, in the destructor in here, I'm going to say C out. Destroying. Destroying name number. I'm going to say minus minus counter, counter, OK, so reduce it by 1. And then I'm going to actually print the value 2. Why not? I'm just going to say print it 2 so I know what is being deleted. OK, just, just to, for the heck of it to see how it works. Now, I'm going to run this step by step so you can see what happens. So it's going to come over here, welcome to yada, 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 names, and it's going to tell me number of names. I'm going to say three. I want three names. I hit it. Now, as soon as this happens, this line, see what happens. Oh. As soon as this line, see what happens. Creating name number one, number two, number three. Three names are created. Three constructors are carved without me invoking anything. Then, so... Yeah, then it's going to print the first one. Obviously, there is nothing in it because it sets it properly. It comes right down to here. I am interested to get to this point, OK? So I'm going to run it. So Homer Simpson, Simpson, uh, Fred Soleil, Lisa. Simpson. And I hit enter. So the three names are printed and they're all done and everything in reverse order, correct? Now, take a look when delete happens, what happens? Take a look at it and pay good attention to this. What is the, what is the value of N0? What do we have in N0? Homer Simpson, correct? What do we have in 1? We have Fred Soleil. In third one, we have Lisa Simpson, correct? Now, take a look when it's deleted, what happens? So I'm deleting the entire array. What happened? I'm deleting the entire array. Oh, shoot. Uh, 
because it's it's clicked over here. There you go. I am I am and see what happens? Destroying name number two, that's Lisa Simpson. Destroying name number one, index one, that's Fred Sully. Destroying Homer Simpson. So it destroys everything in reverse order. Do we understand this? Okay. So I'll give the example always like this. And I'm going to do the same thing over here again to understand how, co how constructors and destructors are called. This is how they are called. So this is the first object getting created. OK? Then after that, the second object is created. And after that, the third object is created, right? Now, when the objects are getting destroyed, which one has to get destroyed first? The top one. That's why always the destruction happens in reverse order. Remember that. Extremely important thing to know. When you create five objects, they get destroyed in reverse order, always. Are we OK with this? All right. So now that we have done this, now that we have done this, let's modularize this and make the class what it's supposed to be. So I'm going to stop this. And I'm going to commit. So at which stage are we? We are uh, privacy uh, member uh, methods. Privacy construction destruction. Okay? Commit and push. Okay. So <clears throat> let's save this. Zero two methods privacy and construction and destruction. So what I'm going to do now is this. I'm going to actually uh, create a class. So I'm going to say add. I'm going to say class. The class's name is name, right? OK. I'm going to click OK. So oh, shoot, cancel. OK. So, so let me just do something in here. Uh, cancel, cancel, cancel. Uh, the reason that I have a name over here it won't allow me to do so, so I'm going to uh, ta -ta -ta -ta. Uh, remove all these from here. Where is my? I already have it in the other one. Oh, come on, quicker, quicker. Shh. Seriously? Uh, uh, shift uh, up. Okay, so I'm going to come right down to here and wipe it out. Okay, good. So save. Oh, shoot. Wrong one. Wrong one. Let's not. No, don't save. This is the one that I want to delete. My apologies. My apologies. Sorry, everyone. I know I'm doing boring stuff. Okay, go up. We go up. And delete. Save. Okay, so now we don't have any name created. I can actually create it. Because I already had a class called name, it says, what are you doing? You have a class called. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm going to add. Uh, class name. It's just my laziness because it creates both things at the same time. Okay, so it creates the name.cppnh. Okay, now I don't want that. I'm going to say if not defined, and here is Seneca name, name h, copy, paste, define. Then we have namespace Seneca and bring the name in it. <clears throat> Save that. That's my header file. Now I'm going to come back to my name.cpp. It is already included. So all, all I need to do is to here say namespace Seneca. Now I'll go back to my to my 
this one. Now I'll go to back, uh, back to here. Oh, okay. I don't need to remove anything here. So I'll go back here and, and I'm gonna, did it save it? Oh crap. Ah, I lost it. Let me come back here. Control Z, it's back. <laughs> X, I'm going to remove it so I have everything over here. So I'm going to exit from here, put it in here. So let me put the class in here. So the class goes over here, but all the methods will go outside. There we go. So that's the class. And these are the methods for the class. So everything's here. Now, now I need what I, I'm going to check to see what is needed to be included where. In here, I have SDR len, SDR copy, C out, and all the good stuff. So I need to bring them. And also, uh, I'm going to fix this too. I have to bring everything back in here. Um, don't save. Let's come back over here. Control Z. There we go. Okay. So <clears throat> uh, now uh, in here I have I have include uh, IO stream, correct? And C string. So these things go over here. In here, do I have I have only C out, so these are added. Okay, um, so this is going to be okay. I need using namespace STD for the C in and C out, so this is good. In here, am I using anything? I'm not using anything in here. So I'm just going to compile name and see if everything's good. I'll right click on name and I'm going to go compile. Everything's good. I'll go back to, to the program. In here, I do not need C string. I do not need secure secure thingy. That's gone. I need to include name. And I need to be using namespace. Seneca. And I think everything else is good. Take a look at it, compile it. And I'm done. So now name is modularized. And <clears throat> if that's a uh, word actually, I don't know. But anyways, so I'll do it like this. Now at left side, I see the name, what it does. At right side, I have all the objects with excessive amount of of comments happening over there. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta fix those things. So actually, no, they are good. Um, just organize them. The good thing is that now at any moment you use any of these functions in anywhere, you can simply bring it over here and it explains exactly what it does, okay? So use this practice to see exactly how your functions work, okay? And that's it. So we have it modularized, and uh, we know what privacy is. What uh, and it is already a class. Yes, it's a class. And and by the way, I can just remove it from here because class is private by default, and everything is private at the beginning, and uh, public one is public, and that's that. Any questions? So, looking at the subject notes. Looking at the subject notes, I have to log in first. Oh, God, where's my cell phone? Anybody seen my cell phone? Oh, yeah? <laughs> Sorry, I have to log in. Uh, login, login. Timeout. 
All right. <coughs> All right. Yes, they signed in. So <coughs> we came down to here, and I'm going to explain one more thing, and then we're going to go. Uh, go. Uh, so we are down to this point. So we finished member pies functions and privacy. We did a little bit of construction and destruction, and I'm going to talk about the current object. So we went through a week and a half of material. These type of things, depending on how the classes are digesting it, sometimes fall behind, sometimes go extremely fast. In both classes this semester, we actually went through halfway through week four. So we are on week three. What we have done, we went through week four to just be uh, aware of it. Now, one thing I need to uh, uh, explain to you, uh, we're going to go into details later, but this is what I want to tell you. I have a question. What is, which class are we in now? Dark. Which class are we in now? What is this class? <laughs> OP244, right? So we are in, because he's like, what the heck is he talking about? <laughs> we are in OP244 class, right? All right? Does anybody see a two, OP244? What is the room number? Can anybody see the room number now? No. Okay. But if I say we are in this class, did I say, is it wrong if I say we are in this class? No? So, uh, so we are okay with this? Okay. So we have the exact same mechanism in, in C++. So there is a special type of pointer. You know what a pointer is? Pointer holds the name of a variable, right? We have a special pointer called THIS, this. It is a pointer. It holds an address. What does it hold the address of? The address of the object you are in. So that THIS, 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 this only makes sense if it's inside a member variable or a method, which essentially means the address of the object I'm in. Okay? Why do we need this? Um, I'll go through it. I'll give you one example for it, an awful example that you should never do, but it just resolves something, gives you an example of what the heck does this mean, and I'm going to give you its real uh, reason for it. And some people actually use it this way, which is very bad practice. Do not. They say, do not practice at home. Do not do this at home. This is really what it means. So I have over here a set function, right? Now set function, what is the argument that I'm passing to set? Name, correct? It's name. What if I am nuts enough to call this variable M name? What's going to happen? Then I can say over here M name, and this one becomes M name copied to M name. <laughs> oh, sorry. M name. M name. M name. And M name. Now tell me. Which one of the M names belong to the function, and which one belongs to this class? No way to say, right? I can fix it. Horribly, but I can fix it. I can say, let this be M name and M names, because I want this if statement to check the argument, right? But the M name over here is supposed to be the member variable, correct? So I'm going to say this M name. This M name over here is the argument. Then I'm going to come over here and say surname yada yada. In here, I want to copy the argument to the class's M name. So so why is it giving me an interview? Oh. Stupid compiler. Okay, so <laughs> I know we all do that, don't we? 
So now it's clarified. So I said, because I lost my mind, I named the argument name the same. How can I access the class from outside? I'm going to say this M name. And because I am a member of the class, I have access to its private property, so I can. Never do this. I see professors do that. Never do this. Because, and I used to do that. Like when I learned what this is, oh my god, I can write a cool word. What happens is that you're going to, by mistake, forget a this over here. This is going to create a bug that it takes you two weeks to fix because you don't know which one is what. That's why I actually ask everyone, I put this rule, that if you are creating a member variable, start it with M underline. So you don't have to worry about anything. So extremely bad practice. I'm just explaining to you what this is. This has many other uses, OK? But it tells you exactly what it is. It holds the address of the current object in memory. So when you are in N0, this set is called. This becomes the address of N0. When you are in N1, set is called. This becomes the address of N1, and so on and so forth. As if when we are in this class, we are in M658, correct? I think. OK. But when we are in the lab, we are in M655. So this here means M68. When we are in the lab, this means M655. Are we OK with this? Oh, no, literally, are we OK with this? <laughs> we are? OK, good. So I'm going to remove this from here. And I don't want you to even see that such stupidity exists. So I'm just going to control Z it. You know what it is, and you can look at it in a recording, but I don't want such an awful thing be in my code. So did I fix it now? Name. See, now I have to go through it. Name. Yeah, I think it's OK. Have yourself a wonderful and beautiful day, people. Bye-bye. And please don't come and ask questions here. Let me pack up my stuff, and then. <laughs>